Third, you need to understand that medication is the most effective thing we have. And that doesn't matter to me whether you like that or not. That is a statement of fact. We have no more effective interventions than these medications, which is why in the last decade we have moved them up in our priority of using them. It used to be that we would try everything else under the sun first, and only if they failed go to medication. Well, guess what? 80% of them failed, and we went to medication anyway. And we should have started with it to begin with, because it would have made them more amenable and more susceptible to the other psychosocial educational programs we were trying to do. So don't be surprised to learn that up to 80% of ADHD children will be on medication at some time in their developmental period, whether that is childhood or adolescence. A prodrug is where you take a chemical, in this case amphetamine, and you lock it up. Okay, this is the amphetamine right here, and you lock it up with another chemical so it can't work. Now this drug will only work after you split off, in this case, the lysine. You swallow Vyvanse, there's a chemical in your body that will split off the lysine, and now the amphetamine can go to work. Next, there is nothing you can put in the diet that treats this disorder. So whether it's antioxidants, whether it's the fish oils, whether it's megavitamins, we have yet to find anything that benefits ADHD. The fish oil study, the best one, was published just a month ago by the Swedish uh, research team in Gothenburg. Uh, best trial I've ever seen, and they reported very sobering negative results. Only 25% of the kids responded. It was mainly the inattentive SCT kids. The degree of response was very slight. So even they recommended against it. Any positive reports you've heard were not from well-controlled studies. ADHD is, to summarize it in a single phrase, time blindness. People with ADHD cannot deal with time. And that includes looking back, to look ahead, to get ready for what's coming at you. So the individual with ADHD is kind of living in the now. And wherever the now goes, they are being pulled along by the nose. Or technically, to be exact, it is a nearsightedness to the future. Just as people who are nearsighted can only read things close at hand, people with ADHD can only deal with things near in time. The further out the event lies, the less they are capable of dealing with it. And this is why everything is left to the last minute, because they only deal with last minutes. That's all they perceive, that's all they deal with, that's all they organize too. And so their life is a series of one crisis after another, all of which were avoidable because people prepared, and they didn't. So here's what I want parents to do. If your child is 10, he has the self-control of a 7-year-old. That is how long he can persist. That is how long he can remember. That is how long he can go without supervision. His ability to self-organize is that of a 7-year-old. Now, what would you do for a 7-year-old? How would we arrange homework? What else would we be doing around chores, around social functioning, around independence from parents? You wouldn't be doing as much as you would with a 10-year-old. You would not allow as much responsibility, as much freedom, as much independence. So I want parents to be lowering their expectations to the child's executive age. What is his self-regulatory age? It's 30% younger. All right, that's what you can expect. And if you are expecting more than that, you're my problem, because you're causing the conflict. You are like a parent of a dyslexic child demanding normal reading. You are like the parent of a mildly retarded child demanding normal self-sufficiency, normal cognitive development. You're my problem, because you just don't get it. So I want you to get it. It's a 30% lag. That's where they're at. That's what you can expect. If you're asking for more, you're going to have to do something to rearrange that environment to allow them to show what they know. But if you don't do anything, they're going to be about 30% behind. So what are our emotions are our motivations. If you cannot manage your emotions, you cannot manage your motivation either. Because the fourth executive ability is the source of self-motivation. Self-motivation is the fuel tank for all future directed behavior. There is no getting ready for tomorrow if there is no self-motivation. So what has the ADHD child lost here? They cannot motivate themselves. What does that mean? It means that you will always be dependent on the environment around you and its immediate consequences 
for how hard and how long you can work. And if there are no consequences in that context, you cannot work. You cannot persist. You will not get it done. The fourth executive ability now explains to these parents why this child can play video games for hours and cannot do homework for more than a few minutes. Because the video game provides external, continuous, 100% consequences for interacting with it, and the homework does nothing. When a problem is solved on a sheet of paper, nothing happens. Now, with ADHD children, you've got to get their attention. One of the easiest ways to do it, and also an affectionate way, is to touch them. So I want you to put your hand on their arm, on their hand, or around their shoulder. When you talk to them, I want you to look in their eye, and with that Clint Eastwood look, <laughs> I want you to keep it short and sweet. What do you want done? What are you trying to say? Or is this positive feedback? Is this approval? Is this recognition? Is this praise? But touch, then talk. Keep it short, keep it sweet, get to the point, and then back it up.